Good morning. And I said I wouldn't do another design, but here one is. Uh, people are always telling me that uh, my stuff is too complicated. You know, whether you use uh, 20 parts or uh, 10 parts or 12 parts, you know, what difference does it make? But uh, here's a very simple design that uh, can be made on just a very small board. There's actually only uh, six components that need to be put on the board for this uh, PowerPoint controller. And uh, it's early morning. It's uh, overcast. I'm getting uh, 198 on the panels, 202. If I switch over, it's 3.9 amps. If I switch over to Direct Connect, you can see the power drop drops to about half. And uh, this is actually about half of what my panels can produce. Uh, it's, it's early morning. It's only 930 and it's uh, cloudy and foggy out. But this is the design. As I said, uh, it's just this little board and one little FET. Uh, this doesn't heat up at all. Uh, you know, if your FETs are heating up, you know, you're designing wrong. So uh, this is the, uh, the new proposed uh, PowerPoint controller. And I'll look at, later at the schematic. But let me show you uh, what it does. Uh, these low periods are uh, when the FET is on, supplying power to the heating element. As you can see, it turns on up at this about 60, 62 volts. And it turns off at about 50 volts. So you got about a 10 volt swing. And, uh, you know, that works okay. Uh, my alternate design, if you look at this, you'll see the voltage is almost perfectly flat. Uh, I vary only less than a volt between the highs and lows. It gives you a little more power, and uh, with tracking, it's uh, a better performance. But, you know, this other isn't bad, and uh, it's an introduction to uh, PowerPoint water heating. And, and this whole system you can build for 20 bucks. So let's go upstairs and uh, we'll look at the schematic. So here's the schematic. Uh, it's the same for almost any of my designs. You have a capacitor bank. The main power goes over to the water heater. You turn a FET on and off to dump small amounts of power from the capacitor bank. And you have some FET driver circuit. Well, these in yellow are the only thing you need to put on the board. And we use an IR2101, and uh, that has under voltage protection. So if your uh, voltage drops, you're not going to be driving the FET with a lower value than it should, causing it to overheat. So we do a simple voltage drop from uh, the capacitor bank with two resistors. You know, you can put these two in, in the heat shrink, in the wire. You know, on the board you have a zener. You know, 13 to 15 volts and a capacitor to smooth it out. So we sense the voltage through a voltage divider. And we do an offset with uh, a couple zeners. Now, the reason we do this is that if we just did a pure voltage divider here, uh, this input, what's nice about this chip is it has a Schmidt trigger. And so what happens is when uh, things are varying slowly, when it reaches a certain point, it turns on very quickly. And when it drops below a certain level, it turns off very quickly. So you don't get in an analog region. But uh, this senses a voltage you know, if you're doing a voltage divider calculation, use about two and a half volts here, but there's two volts difference between turn on and turn off. And uh, without this diode arrangement, this thing would have a turn on and turn off of about a 20 volt differential. And uh, we really want to stay around 10 volts. So I subtract off a certain amount of voltage and it's seeing more of a voltage change. And so since you're buying 
you're not going to be buying one zener so uh, you know whatever you buy for here you can put two or three or four uh, depending upon what your voltage is but uh, like I say it's very simple the low output uh, you can put this re resistor you know in heat shrink you always want to have a, a resistor across the FET. You can put this right across these two pins. The controller, the ground of the controller should always go right to the FET. So your PV should also go right to the FET. So you're not creating any ground loops. The capacitor bank, you know, you can get away with four. Uh, I use a uh, uh, seven in, in my system down there. The more capacitors, the better. Uh, the reason is all these capacitors have internal resistance, and uh, the more capacitors in parallel, the more your current you'll be able to supply without capacitor heating. You know, a lot of capacitors. That's the same reason you don't, you know, start a car with a little nine volt battery. They just can't supply the current. So you can do four minimum, but uh, it'd be better if you had more. And uh, even if they were smaller, you know, that would be even better having more capacitors. But you can experiment around with. So, like I say, we have a little uh, dropping resistor right here. This is just the voltage divider. Just a little bit of filter on it. This diode is very important because what this does is if you should turn your pot over what the supply voltage is on this chip you'll destroy the input and so this is a protect diode it can be any you know 4007 4001 any small diode will will work in there but uh, this is it you know use a FET that's about 10 times the amperage of what you expect uh, you're buying the high current FET for uh, reasons of its low internal resistance <clears throat> you want the heat here not here so uh, this is the system and uh, if you have any questions uh, like I say this can be set up for any voltage if you really want to go high voltage you can use an IGBT here you can get IGBTs that uh, go over a thousand volts fairly easy and when you're doing a, a voltage divider here you always want to have resistance coming from the capacitor bank. I mean, if you wired right to the pot and something in the pot shorted out, you know, this would be toast. So this little uh, resistor up here, this provides some protection if anything further down shorts out. So uh, let me know what you think. But I mean, this is not that hard to lay out. And like I say, these parts and these parts, they're all external. And you only need six on the board that you uh, have to lay out. And remember, from the bottom side, there'll, there'll be a notch or a dot or something right here. Pin one is actually always on the top right. And uh, the pin numbers go clockwise. Uh, this is a top view. It's a little more straight line forward uh, understanding if you do it here. Now, if you had two heating elements and you wanted to turn things on at different, different times, have a priority, and have more wattage, uh, you could drive this second with, uh, you know, having a little offset resistance between these two pins. And uh, you could have a priority arrangement. So uh, basically the second, the second FET would turn on first and then it would stay on and then the second one would come on at a little bit higher voltage when you had more power so there's uh, lots of things you could do with this it's simple but uh, it works thanks for watching